Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to Women and Shakespeare. I'm your host, Dr. Varsha Bantwani. I have been drawn to the work of our podcast guest, Professor Alexa Alice Jugo. So in your article, Teaching Shakespeare in a Time of Hate in Shakespeare Survey, in this you discuss how Shakespeare's writing can be a useful tool in tackling challenges of all forms of violence, including racism, anti-Semitism, misogyny, and transphobia. And you especially advocate new theories and practices of listening for silenced voices. Now, that is one of the things that this podcast is obviously very passionate about. So could you unpack this for our listeners? Yes. One of my strategies to teach in a time of hate, the time we live in, is radical listening. This is a term uh, used by Rita Charon, founder of Narrative Medicine. It's basically a set of communication methods that attend to motivations rather than superficial plot elements that attends to what is unsaid or silent rather than what is explicitly said. I think uh, a character like Ophelia, who doesn't say much, does that always and automatically mean that she's weak. How about Cesario, whose story is often buried under cisgender biases? So the strategy of radical listening basically enhances a sense of inclusiveness in the classroom. And so based on a most basic form, I'm just advocating for transcendence beyond the literal. You know, what is written, what is explicitly announced. In fact, if you think about how drama works, it is all about the unsaid. It's not necessarily what the character said in this moment. And so radical listening can also be combined with what is called presentism. Kind of think about how the past is at work in the exigencies of the present. And we can, of course, link immediately Othello to the Black Lives Movement. We can link measure for measure to the Me Too movement. But beyond that, in pragmatic terms, radical listening and presentism, they create connections between seemingly isolated instances of our artistic expressions or isolated historical moments. And that gives us mental capacity to truly process the complexity of our moment um, beyond the kind of simplistic form of Oh, there's a long history of queerness, longer than you thought. Of course, that's important. But I think to truly be able to have a global perspective, to appreciate a deeper, longer history would enable us to deal with ambiguity. You know, ambiguity can help connect minds for global change. Not everything is always black and white, right? Perhaps for the better. And we can then transcend the binaristic modes of thinking as well, right? Male, female, black, white, and, and, and many other, many other instances of kind of dualistic modes of looking at the world. There are, there are a lot of ambiguous characters that could be particularly fruitful ground for this kind of exploration and mental exercises. Last but not least, radical listening could also help us rethink common classroom practices, such as trigger and content warnings, commonly practiced in secondary and higher education in US, UK, and Canada. Trigger warning is basically a statement on the syllabus about certain contents, right, to be covered. It's a bit of, usually it's a one-way communication. So I have used radical listening to turn it into a community exercise, communal event. I ask students, you know, what would you deem, right, if you were on the film rating board, or if you were to teach this one day, what might you consider to be triggering? What's so interesting is that actually we discovered that trigger warnings attend only to certain groups' comfort. Misgendering acts using their wrong pronouns or dead naming a person are not typically listed as triggering. 
outside of trans studies courses, trans misogyny is rarely listed as triggering. So the content warnings should really critique institutionalized sexism, state sexism, racism. If you think about Titus Andronicus, the, the contemplation of murdering a mixed race baby, well, black baby, why is that not as often mentioned as the rape and mutilation of a white woman, Lavinia? All of these begs the question of what inclusiveness truly means. So by saying all this, I simply meant that it's important to have community rather than you know, teaching in a time of hate is actually all about building communities with radical listening. We can listen to each other, go beyond the superficial. I hope these tips are useful to our listeners in terms of excavating silent voices in all kinds of tech. That was Alexa Alice Shugo. Dear listeners, adieu, adieu, adieu. But remember to tune in to Women and Shakespeare. Streaming at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and numerous other platforms. If you want to listen to the podcast with a full transcript, head over to our website, www.womenandshakespeare.com. Until then, keep smashing the patriarchy.